Hey folks, I'm Sean McCormick and welcome to Lightroom Blog. So this time it's not about Lightroom, it's just a very very short video talking about something brand new that's out today and that is Luminar 2018. Now this is not the version that has the management features in it or anything like that, but it is the new version which looks very very different and has loads of new features. So Luminar 2018 has been announced today and um, it's on pre-order and it'll be out in a couple of weeks. So there are some new features with it and I have to say I do like the way it looks, the overall look has improved quite a lot. It actually looks more professional if that's a possible description of it. It does look like they're building up towards the new module that will be added on for management, uh, which is supposed to be coming in 2018. Which actually isn't that far away, it's only two months away for 2018 so we'll see how soon into 2018 we get that. But for now, let's have a look at some of these new features and these new layouts that are inside Luminar 2018. So as you can see, folks, that it does look quite a bit different. So everything is kind of a little bit neater. The things are a little bit smaller. The tools which were on the side are now over here instead. Uh, you can still turn it on and off your presets and you can turn it on and off the panel with the settings in it. Inside the settings, you can turn on and off the histogram, the layers, and the information. Uh, and you also have this thing called workspaces, um, which is new. So you can have quick and awesome, essentials, aerial photography, black and white, landscape, portrait, and street workspaces. So let's say, for example, we go for uh, street, just for example. We get all of these things. So we have the accent AI, tone control, structure, soft focus, all of these things, curves, that way you get something that's straight in and ready to go. Uh, you get texture overlays as well there with that. You can also clear the workspace just back to nothing as well. So let's say we want to add a filter. So we click add filter. Whereas before we had these uh, huge a uh, box describing stuff, we now just have a little small box as we hover over. So it's much neater and tighter in my opinion. Okay, there are a bunch of new filters as well. For example, we now have the matte look. So the matte look will give you that uh, that faded look that's really popular at the moment. And then it's kind of got a bit of a toning in it. So you can select where your toning is. So as you can see, that's very, very quick to get that kind of retro look that is super, super popular at the moment. And um, there also is other things like uh, LUT mapping, right? So you're actually able to load LUT files. So these are lookup table files. Um, I've known there directly. These are lookup table files that allow you to take cinematic looks and apply them to your photos as well. LUTs are commonly used in Premiere and other applications like that for creating the color grading that you see on, on your cinematic films, for example, like that. So as well as loading the LUT, you can control the amount of the LUT, which would be the equivalent of the opacity if you're doing it in Photoshop, but you can also control the contrast and saturation. So it's a little bit more useful. Other things that are there as well, and I'm not sure that it's going to be much luck in this particular image, but I will just throw it in as well, and that is the sun rays. So you can have a sun ray in it. So interestingly enough, that sun ray does happen to work from where the light source is from in this case. And um, so you can control the amount, the look, the number of them, all of that kind of stuff, length of them, warmth of them. So make that warmer to kind of coincide with what's going on there. Radius, glow radius. So you have all of these kind of things to add sun rays to the image. That, I mean, I actually really, really like how it's looking and stuff like that. Okay, but additional stuff and something that would have been handy when I was doing a portrait uh, tutorial recently is dodge and burn. So you got a, a dodge and burn. Uh, so it's literally just, you know, you start painting. So the idea is that you can dodge and burn. So you paint in for lighten and darken. Let's say I just want to lighten in around the face here. And let's say I just click darken. So let's just, for the sake of it, I'm going to make this much bigger. I can just kind of come in here and just dark. Oh, it's still on. It's still on dark or on lighting, so I can just darken it in around the edges. Just by way of example to show that can be done. I'm not going to overdo it or be precise about it. Uh, so other things that are there as well, and let me just the little triangle or right. these little triangles just to put them down a little bit so we can see what's going on when I add another filter. So the panels would just pop open every time I add another filter, so I've just deleted them for now. So other things that have been added, uh, we have a hue shift filter and just, it will literally, as it says, change the overall hue of the picture. Okay. 
so that could actually be added to a layer and you could paint it in if you wanted for example and the other thing that you have is you have brilliance and warmth so you can change the vividness and you can change the warmth so for example i could use that to cool this down to hide the sodium lighting a little bit so I'm going to delete that and I'm going to come here and talk about some of the new stuff that's in raw develop. Now raw develop has been made, apparently the raw development process has been made 200% faster. And um, so you have your basic uh, raw controls here, but you also now have lens controls and transform controls. So you can do vertical, horizontal and rotate. You also have aspect and you also have scale as well. So that will allow you to correct problems in buildings now you're obviously doing it manually there is no auto corrections uh, but it does allow you to do that so those are there as well there as well as the newer features as well there have been some enhancements uh, to the 2017 filter so things like structure bicolor toning high key image radiance split toning and microstructure have all had enhancements so another change is that uh, you probably saw that when I was showing tools is that there's no noise reduction in there so that is now as the noise is a real time filter for fixing luminosity and color issues with noise. So that's done there and you got the boost as well. So that's a bit of a change as well. So you're not waiting for the whole processing to happen, which was a bit, a bit of a slow thing in 2017, which I did comment on at the time. So that's, that's a really, really good addition as well. So folks, that's some of the new features that are in Luminar 2018. It's not meant to be a comprehensive look and some of these things could benefit from separate tutorials of their own, obviously, rather than just the very, very quick look I've done at them here. So one thing I haven't mentioned, which I'm just going to look at very quickly, is the presets. The presets did take up a lot of room in the corner and they're now much smaller down below. And obviously they still can be turned on and off, just like in 2017. But in this case, the categories are now above them in the center and you choose them as I think it's much neater it doesn't look so cramped as it did in 2017 uh, so you can change between them there as well there's also some aerial stuff being added as well and uh, so you can turn them on and off really quickly it's very very handy from that point of view so folks if you like the video please do hit the thumbs up uh, subscribe if you haven't already and hit the notification bell if you want to get notified thank you for taking the time out of your day to watch this video I do appreciate it and I will see you in the next one